Hello there. I've just recently discovered this really uh, interesting project. It's called application.garden. And the idea is that uh, people from Claire Connect Journal trying to solve a problem that was uh, for a while in their closure ecosystem. And the problem is that there is no easy and straightforward way to deploy closure applications. So people from uh, Java script ecosystem has a bunch of uh, tools and platforms where they can go and literally create an application in 10 minutes and it will be up and running. Uh, in Clojure it was always different, so it's great pleasure to write Clojure code, work with it uh, locally, use the REPL, but after you're done you want to deploy and ship your project and here are multiple options. So you can go with a, like a VM, uh, for example, like a droplet in DigitalOcean. You can uh, build your jars and spin your jars there. Um, but you have to maintain these pipelines yourself, how you ship and uh, restart your server. Uh, and also you can go the next level, you can build Docker image and use, uh, for example, Docker Compose to still run it on um, on the digital ocean droplet or any other VM. But now you have the um, extra resources used for the Docker. Uh, you can go um, one level up. You can use uh, something like ECS in AWS uh, where you have the containers runtime. But you see that the thing here is you need to build a jar yourself you need to package that yourself into a Docker image and you need to maintain all these pipelines to build and ship your application. So uh, application.garden, uh, as I checked in the docs, is supposed to be an easy way to uh, deploy a Clojure app. And the idea is that we'll have uh, a, a CLI tool that we can install and use. And I already tried to uh, install it uh, locally so it's still not uh, like all features are not available but at least I have the CLI here um, and you can see commands and the API how that will look so we have garden and then the entry point will this init uh, that will initialize project in the local folder and uh, they'll have like instructions how what what you want to deploy and then there are things like deploy delete uh, uh, logs to connect to your running application and see uh, get the logs um, and then interesting thing is that uh, REPL is enabled by default so you can connect to um, a remote and REPL uh, to work with um, cl uh, code in real time uh, in the real application um, I know that was like a selling point of closure many years ago. Uh, I actually never done that in production and it feels like a bit scary, but for hobby project, why not? Um, you can easy, really quickly debug your application on the real, uh, real deployment. Okay, so we'll go through some of those commands uh, in a sec. Let's see what we have. So application.garden is a platform for hosting small web applications written in Clojure. It focuses on providing a good developer experience and having a low barrier entry to quickly deploy your projects. And yeah, as I said, uh, the barrier uh, from building the project locally and deploying it in the Clojure X system was always a case. So a developer should kind of know how to build and ship their apps. Um, I'm not saying that it's too hard, it's just like an extra step that's probably uh, will will be a kind of big issue for beginners if they want to ship their application quickly. Um, the interesting question is, uh, what is small web application, right? So it's kind of uh, not too clear uh, to what extent we can use this. Uh, will it like have a load balance and we can scale it horizontally? Or like what's the limit? really uh, so what we what features uh, will be there is uh, option to get a public domain so you can add your custom domain with HTTPS which is good you don't have to manage uh, let's script uh, you, you don't have to manage um, like reverse proxy yourself if you're doing like your own deployment then what I mentioned uh, already uh, option to 
um, have a live uh, REPL uh, in your production application. Then we have a storage uh, that's like a persistent storage to store your files, maybe like SQLite database file, etc. Then a way to manage secrets. And as you can see in the um, in the CLI, there is a secrets uh, command as a way to store the secrets. And those secrets are exposed as environment variables in your closure application. So you can just use system slash get env to, to read the secret. Um, there's also a thing called garden ID. Um, I'm not sure I like I understood that uh, correctly, but there's like a new way, like a new basically open ID provider as, an, as a get, and you can uh, user can use that to access multiple uh, garden applications with that uh, credentials. And then there is a, a way to send and receive emails, and there is like a cron um, background tasks that you can schedule on some schedule really okay so for now you can do this but uh, for me garden ini didn't work so yeah I wasn't able to to go too deep into that um, and then the idea is that you have your folder and you run garden init inside and it will create a garden.edn file with the settings for for the project uh, regarding deploys, uh, you basically just have to add your files uh, that you added into Git and then commit it. So it's like, I think it it will check something like that. There's no pending on like files that not added to the uh, to Git state, and then you run garden deploy. And uh, it would be really interesting to know uh, what exactly the deployment looks on the end. Uh, is it just like build of the jar and then they run the jar itself or it will be a contenderized somehow and what will be the underlying infrastructure I'm not sure, sh sure if that will be even shared but yeah for me it will be really interesting to, to know more details like that and uh, yeah after that your app will be deployed and there will be a health check on the uh, just root uh, handler uh, uh, had request should return 200 and after that I think application will be considered as healthy and then you can like connect to logs connect to REPL etc so here we have an REPL support uh, as I already said not a killer feature for me but would be really interesting to play with that on a hobby project and there is also a nice thing that you can, uh, without uh, interactive REPL, you can just send small snippets um, into your application and get back the evaluation result, which is pretty pretty nice. Uh, of course, you can uh, disable the end REPL. So I think if you want to debug, you can deploy with enabled end REPL. But for most most of the time, I think I would prefer to remove the nrepl from running app so then i have deployment strategies and one is zero downtime so um, the second instance will be create, uh, started first and then when it's uh, healthy the load balancer will be switched and all traffic will go to the new deployment but there's also a restart that will have some downtime but um, as it mentioned here, the uh, use case for that strategy is when uh, your app is not supposed to run multiple instances at the same time. So here we have a small snippet uh, how the config looks and there's like just an EDN file and you can just pass like a deploy strategy keyword. Pretty nice. Uh, Mono repo support. Uh, and I see this could be used for things like if you use uh, a tool Polylith for the mono repo de development enclosure for multiple bases or how they called it you can create multiple deployments separate garden applications so you can use this shared code base but you can ship multiple apps which is really nice uh, then we have groups uh, for me as a solo developer for hobby projects i'm not sure i'll use that but 
if you're working with someone, you can add uh, multiple people and give them permissions as a developer, for example, to, to the group so you can work together. Then we have storage, which is really uh, nice. And so it's like a persistent storage where you can put your things that you want to uh, save across restarts. Uh, for example, uh, it could be a simple application that use SQLite database. So you can use a file uh, backend for that and you can put the file into the uh, garden storage. That's nice. And then we have secrets. Uh, so there is like, uh, well, they covered that, I guess, uh, secrets command in the garden, and then you can add a new secret, and then that secret will be available as system env. So if you uh, want to use some like hosted SQLite database or Postgres, uh, like Terso or something for SQLite, or there are options for Postgres as well, or Superbase, uh, you can put here... Um, your secrets to connect to the database or any other API keys, etc. Then we have domains. Uh, by default, uh, you will get an HTTPS project name apps.garden uh, public domain. Uh, but also, when you're ready to publish your app, uh, you can add custom domain that you can buy separately and then just configure DNS. I think that's pretty standard for all um, all platforms like that. Um, you just go to your uh, reg uh, place you, where you registered your domain name and just change some DNS records there. Okay, so um, yeah, this is this garden ID. Um, I think I'll keep I'll leave this for now. Uh, I just need to try that first before talking about that. Then we have email, and there are some examples. Uh, where you can send and receive emails. Uh, so it looks like this. So you can send email, and this is the API for that. Basically, an HTML body and some um, metadata like subject um, to and from. And then um, we have uh, cron tasks uh, that you can use to uh, schedule some uh, tasks in your application. And I think it's using this Chime library. Um, I had a bit of experience with this one, so that's good. Cool. Uh, project templates. Um, I think this is really important that uh, Garden init is compatible with depths.new uh, uh, templates. And there is also a default template available here uh, for Garden. But I've checked that. It's pretty basic, I think. Okay. And... Yeah, so there is also examples, but uh, there's not much yet. Uh, but overall, I think this looks really interesting for closure developers out there. And I definitely recommend you to go to application garden and put your email in the waiting list and see how it goes. And also, if uh, authors of this tool uh, just want me to be a, like a beta tester, I'm happy to try that. I have some hobby projects that I can try to convert here and uh, try to deploy. So please get in touch if you're interested. Cool. So I hope that was interesting and useful. Um, uh, thanks a lot for watching and uh, leave, leave the comment what you think about this new platform. And uh, have a nice day and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.